This is my 2018 Volkswagen e-Golf, which I bought a couple months ago and is currently sitting just under a thousand miles on the odometer. If you're not familiar with the e-Golf, it's an all electric version of Volkswagen's popular golf model. The e-Golf is only sold in 10 states and the District of Columbia. The 2018 model comes with an electric range of 125 miles. In terms of appearance, the e-Golf is very similar to its gasoline and diesel counterparts. Um, there are a few cosmetic differences. Primarily, it comes with a different set of wheels. The uh, front bumper here has got a unique LED strip and chrome strip along the bottom there. And then the front grille, because this is an electric vehicle, this is not as open to the engine compartment. Beyond that, the e-Golf uh, basically uh, is the same, cosmetically speaking, as the gasoline version. Likewise, as we jump into the interior of the vehicle, you'll see that it carries a very similar appearance to the gasoline version. Very nice overall, got a nice clean, classy look to it. The primary difference is that in place of the tachometer that you'd see on other versions, it's got this little gauge showing electric output. Now, I recently posted a video talking about the five things that I like most about the e-Golf. In today's video, I wanna talk about the five things that bother me the most. So the first thing that bothers me about the e-Golf is that the climate control system will turn on automatically each time that you unplug the vehicle and start it for the first time. Um, that's not necessarily a big deal on a gasoline vehicle, but on an electric vehicle where range is very important, it can be a significant issue. And let me show you why. Now you can see that currently the climate control system is turned off. So there's the displays on both the driver and passenger side there. And with that off, you'll see that our range is sitting at 129 miles. If we go back to this screen and we turn, push the auto button, to 72 degrees, you'll see that I don't have the max AC running. And you know what, we'll just go ahead and push that AC button even, turn that off. So just having a fan running here, you'll see that our range drops to 109 miles. So pretty significant hit just for having a fan running in the vehicle. The thing is that it's a pretty comfortable temperature outside right now, and my preference would be to not even run the system. And the issue is that sometimes you don't notice that it's running until several miles into the drive. Um, I would prefer that the system is automatically set to default um, to be off when the vehicle started and you have the ability to turn it on as needed. My second issue with the e-Golf is gonna make me really sound like a complainer, but there's good reason for that. I just talked to you about how the climate control system in the vehicle has a significant impact on the range. And so it's really nice to be able to use the heated seat whenever possible to help extend that range and minimize the use of that HVAC system. The issue is that you've got a heated seat on the driver and front passenger. The rear seats don't have a heated function. And so if you've got a rear passenger, it's not gonna do anything for them. You've gotta run the HVAC system for them to be comfortable. It'd be nice if all of the seats were heated to help with that. On top of that, it'd be really nice if the vehicle came with a heated steering wheel. I know that's become a luxury feature that's more common on higher end vehicles, but for electric vehicles, I think it should become a standard option. Um, the other kind of odd thing about that is the vehicle does come with heated front seats in base form which is unusual for most other vehicles. They already recognize that that's an advantage for an electric vehicle. It seems like they would do the same in the rear seats. On top of that, the mirrors are heated. So you'll see we've got a heated mirror uh, for both the driver and passenger side. And on top of that, I'm not sure if it's picking up in this image. Yeah, there we go. You can see that the front windshield is heated, which is a really cool feature, makes the uh, clearing of snow and ice in the morning on the vehicle very quick easy, and of course, you're saving uh, the use of that HVAC system. And so they went to the trouble of having heated seats in the front, heated mirrors, heated windshield. It would have been really nice if they took the additional effort to heat the steering wheel for the driver and then heat those rear seats. My third issue with the e-Golf is that I'm not a fan of the stock wheels that come on the car. I think they're way too small and I'm not a fan of the overall styling. Unfortunately, they're the only wheels that Volkswagen offers on the e-Golf. Um, you'll see that they just look kind of small, proportionally speaking, to the overall vehicle. I think a much larger wheel would look better. Now, there is a reason for going with this wheel set. Uh, for starters, it's very aerodynamic. It's also a lightweight wheel uh, with low rolling resistance. And likewise, the stock tires that come on the e-Golf offer low rolling resistance, which is important for increasing that electric range. 
Now to further prove my point, even Volkswagen thinks that the wheels on the e-golf are too small. Um, and on the vehicle infotainment screen, you'll see that the imagery shows a much larger wheel with a lower profile tire. And in that size and proportion, I actually think the wheels look all right. I'd probably stick with them if they came in this larger size. Obviously they're not doing that because of range, but it's much more attractive in that configuration. My fourth issue with the e-golf is the backup camera and the noise that it makes when it operates. It's unfortunate because it's a pretty cool setup. The backup camera is actually hidden in the Volkswagen logo. Let me show you a video real quick of what that looks like. <laughs> So you can see it's a pretty cool setup. Let me replay that video with the audio that you hear inside of the vehicle when it operates. So you can see that sound is a little bit annoying. It's also a little disconcerting if you haven't driven the vehicle before to hear an odd noise coming from the back uh, every time that you back up. It'd be nice if they could find a way to make that a little quieter. Now there are some advantages to the setup beyond the fact that it's kind of a cool placement. The first one is that it keeps the lens of the camera very clear uh, from rain, from debris, from other grime and grit that you might get on the back of your vehicle. And so with that, the image stays very clean and clear and so that's really great. On top of that, the uh, screen in the e-golf is very large. And so with that, you get a really nice large image. And like I said, you can see it's a really clear image and the screen's very clear. So the car's dirty right now. Typically on my other cars, once the car is dirty, that lens is dirty and you can't see. And so overall, I'm a fan of the placement of the camera. I just wish they could do something about that noise. So my fifth and final issue with the e-golf is that while it's an excellent vehicle that I would highly recommend to potential buyers, it's only offered by Volkswagen in 10 states and the District of Columbia. On top of that, production in those states is very limited. When I was looking at buying this vehicle, in early 2018, I did a search of the entire United States and Volkswagen had less than 30 available for sale in the country. I think it'd be really great if Volkswagen did more to market and promote this vehicle and begin sales in the other uh, 40 states that are missing out on that. I think it's a really great vehicle. It's one that I think Volkswagen should promote in the brand and give more people the opportunity to experience this excellent vehicle. So those are the five issues that I have with my e-golf. If you have any comments or questions, leave those in the section below. For more videos on the 2018 Volkswagen e-golf, subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, thanks for watching.